Hi there, my name is Piers. I work for iPilot in London. I'm here in Prague to explain a little bit about the A320 simulator that we have here. The A320 is a, a short to medium haul plane flown by airlines such as BA, EasyJet uh, and some other popular uh, low cost airlines. It's got around 180 seat configuration uh, and I'm here to guide you through a few of the components so that you've got a better understanding of it when you come to do your flight simulation. The first thing you'll notice as you get into the A320 seat is it has a side stick control as opposed to the common yoke. Uh, this is due to the fly-by-wire mechanism that's used. Your instructor will go through how to use this control. Uh, you'll be using it on all stages of the flight, takeoff, uh, obviously all the turns and your landing. Takeoff will be using an elevator pitch control which will be a backwards motion such as that, that will bring the nose up. To push the nose forward, you produce the reciprocal version to push the uh, side stick forward. A left turn would then be to put the stick towards the left. This can roll the plane into the turn. It is then only necessary to keep the side stick central to stay in the turn. To come out of the turn, or to level off as we call it, you will then need to put the opposite action in in this case to the right. You'll notice immediately that it only takes a very light action to control the plane. Two fingers are more than enough uh, as there are no large pressure movements needed. Every motion should be very smooth. Here you have your PFD or primary flight display. On the left here you have your speed in knots or nautical miles per hour. Down at the bottom you have your heading, as if on a compass rose, and on the right you have your altitude in feet. Further right you have your VSI or vertical speed indicator. You'll see a needle representing whether you're ascending or descending, and it will be measured in hundreds of feet per minute. Possibly most importantly, in the centre you have your artificial horizon. The blue and the brown represent the sky and the ground respectively and you have the wings of the aeroplane and the nose represented on here too. As you climb away from your takeoff you will notice you are aiming for a certain angle of pitch and you will be able to see each line represents two and a half degrees. Here is your ND or navigational display. You'll notice the compass rose can tell you which direction you're going in. 270 will be west, for example. Also displayed on here, you'll be able to see the route that you've planned to fly along and the runway that you are actually on at the moment. These are close by airports that can also be used for navigational purposes. This is a multifunctional display. You'll notice you can also use it for navigating with the entire compass rose here. You can also use it for instrument landings. This is a VOR approach. And if I switch it again, you'll see an ILS approach on there. Ground speed and true airspeed are also automatically calculated for you on this display. This is your FCU or flight control unit. You'll be explained that you can have these two autopilots which you can engage at certain times during the flight. The knobs up here will control their speed, which you can change, heading and altitude. And the auto throttle can be selected with this button down here. To the right and to the left, you have the multifunctional display on the navigational display which I explained earlier. These displays that you're looking at now represent fuel temperatures and pressure system that you will be explained about when you come to do your simulator experience. The bottom screen here again is another multifunctional display that can scroll through all the systems of the aircraft and at any given time produce information on their running. Here to the right you have a landing gear lever which you will have to pull out to 
before you're able to push it down and likewise when you're going up. The lights then up here indicate whether the landing gear's fully gone down and just below these lights you have the auto braking system. To the left we have the standby instruments in case of any redundancy that may be needed in the event of some system failures. To control the two engines on the A320 you have two thrust levers that can work independently but generally speaking you will always use them together. Well, upon landing there is a safety catch to activate the reverse thrust like such. The flaps which will also be used on landing are located here and they also have a safety catch which will need to be lifted in order to attain the flap that you require. You may be requested to use the speed brake which are spoilers on the top of the wing which are used for reducing speed uh, and dumping lift. They're located here and in order to activate them you are required to push down and select the lever into the correct position. Also on this panel you'll notice the two FMGCs or flight management guidance computers, one for each pilot. They are used for inputting all of the weights of the aircraft, the routes that you might be going on, uh, even the temperatures outside. All of the information is entered here. So that's a brief introduction to the A320. To learn some more you'll have to come to our, one of our many simulator stores around Europe. Uh, I hope you enjoy your flight experience. Thanks.